right, this is 20.3 arachnids. And arachnids, of course, spiders, daddy long legs, mites, ticks, scorpions. Um, arachnids are not just spiders. So arachnophobia might be the fear of spiders, but arachnids actually aren't just spiders. But the majority of arachnids are spiders. But basically what makes an arachnid an arachnid, those eight legs. Um, basically that's one of the, the things that does that. They also have two body parts. The head and thorax combined are a cephalothorax together there. And then the abdomen. And um, they're really very different. You might have um, a South American tarantula that's like five inch long body and its legs span to eight to ten inches and then um, you have a really teeny tiny water spider that actually spends its lifetime underwater and um, some of these um, spiders are almost microscopic so you know ticks and mites of course are so they're they vary greatly in size um, zoologists have identified about 43,000 different types of spiders so far yeah so those of you who are like freaked out about spiders there's lots of them um, I can't remember this is not exactly scientific, but I know that there's information out there that like humans swallow two to three spiders in their, or, or like they go up their nose at night or something like that in, in, in the course of their lifetime. So <laughs> that's kind of fun. Um, anyway, so two distinct body regions, cephalothorax and abdomen, that makes them a little bit different. Then of course the eight legs there as well. Um, the external structure um, they have chelicery, so um, these are those little appendages that seize and crush their prey. And um, sometimes they'll have chela, little claws on them. On them. <clears throat> but um, true spiders, there's two different types of spiders, true spiders and megalomorphs. And I'll see if I can, like, get on here because I have a whole, like, note section slideshow thing for this. I'll see if I can put that on there so you can have the notes or maybe I'll just send them to you. Um, on your email or text or something. But the two types of spiders, true spiders and megalomorphs. And true spiders have side-to-side -side jaws. It's like that. And then megalomorphs have up-and-down jaws that they come at you with or at other things. So true spiders are the normal spiders that we think of, brown spiders, cobweb weavers, black widows, round recluse, those kinds of things. And megalomorphs are the ones that we really freak out at. And that would be tarantulas. And they have fangs, actually, that point downward. Um, the the true spiders have little fangs, but they kind of cross like this, and then it's not that big of a deal. But um, anyway, they all have these little pedipalps in the spider's mouth. They have the chelicery so that they can um, the well the, so that they can grab and seize the prey. And then I've told you this before. I think well maybe that was in seventh grade. But anyway. The spider will stick its fangs in there. Depends on the species, of course. But anyways, it'll stick its fangs in there. It will secrete some type of substance into the body of the insect that it's eating. Normally, it wraps it up in its um, web, gets caught in its web, wraps it up in its web and its silk, lets it die most of the time, or paralyzes it, depends on the species and sticks in there and all of the insides turn to like a slushy and it sticks its um, pedipalps and things in there that um, can actually suck up all of the fluid from the inside and then the little insect shell is left so that's how most spiders eat they dissolve their insides stick something in there suck it all out Leave the shell. Interesting. Um, so the pedipalps inside the spider's mouth, and it uses it to kind of help cut and crush the food. And then um, a male spider's pedipalps also have the reproductive organs on them. So that's just good to know. Um, the spider's four legs are attached, or eight legs, four pairs of legs are attached to the cephalothorax. Um, Depends on the nerve, the nervous system of most spiders. They have brains and nerves, um, just like most things. Um, jumping spiders and wolf spiders have really good sense of sight, but some of them um, have little nerve hairs called setae, and 
those actually are like their sense organs. Instead of having antenna like insects do, spiders will have the little CT um, there instead. Um, the also within the cephalothorax has a it has a sucking stomach, and that's its beginning of its digestive tube. It has powerful muscles to help it to suck all the juices out of the insects there. Um, a spider's blood is usually pale blue. Interesting. And the heart is a long, slender, kind of muscular tube that just pumps it through an open system of circulation, um, like we've talked about before. Um, and then, uh, da, da, da. page 419, it's respiratory system. It does have book lungs. Look up book lungs on the internet, and you can see some microscopic pictures of book lungs. And so it has a trachea, it has a spiracle, it has a trachea goes in there and then it has book lungs and the book lungs are like pages in a book and as it breathes in the air the air goes over those pages and those pages like each one in there has capillaries and um, they uh, do the oxygen carbon dioxide exchange um, within those like little pages of the book um, usually it's about 15 extremely thin flat folds of tissue they're kind of parallel. That's why they're called book lungs. They also have spinnerets, and they use that to spin silk. And they shoot it out of their silk glands, spin them beautiful webs. And I wish I could show you right now, like, all the different videos. Maybe I'll put them on here somehow if I can figure all that out. Um, so you can see a, a spider actually spin in the web. Or look it up on YouTube, you know. Um, and it's really cool to see the spider spin in the web. They have some pretty amazing things. Their silk... It's supposed to be like the equal thickness of um, steel. It would be stronger than steel if you had the, you know, could put steel into threads like that. So um, it's really, really strong. Um, so um, the pedipalps of a male spider serve as a vital purpose in um, production. And so the male will place their sperm in a specially designed chamber on his pedipalps. And then when they mate, He'll take that and put the um, in the structure on his female's abdomen called the seminal receptacle, which we talked about in insects as well. And then when the female stores that there until the eggs are ready to lay, and it'll go through that um, as she lays it. So it'll be fertilized as um, she lays her eggs. She can lay as many as 2,000 eggs at one time. Now, some species only lay one, but some species lay 2,000 eggs at a time which really, really makes me mad whenever one of them gets into my basement and lays eggs down there because then there's little spiderlings everywhere. Um, so then once they hatch from their eggs, they are little babies and then spiderlings um, is what they're called. They'll stay inside the silken cocoon and remain inside there until warm weather. Then they come out. Um, they will balloon away um, once they're ready. They will sail away on these little silk strands they'll shoot out the silk and then they'll kind of use the wind breezy day to to go off to their own little lives and um adult spiders have different life cycles depending upon the species so it just depends on each one but some of them only live for you know like a year like a season basically except tarantulas and then tarantulas can live for up to 20 years that's why people have them as pets well that and to like gross people out. I don't really know why you'd have that as a pet, but you know, whatever. Um, they are the longest living um, of all the spiders. They can live for over 20 years. And the bigger that they are, they keep growing, molting and all that. And so the bigger that they are, the older that they are, the older they are, the bigger they are. All right. So other arachnids, those are spiders. And um, there's lots of different kinds and interesting things about those, but you can read about that. Um, Daddy long legs. Um, or some of us call it granddaddy long legs. Those are also technically known as harvestmen, and um, they're known for their long, spindly legs. And um, they don't have a constriction or a waist, but if you would cut their little body open, you kind of see the two body parts in there. They don't have spinnerets. Um, they are capable of regeneration um, at a certain amount, but then but they can live if you pull off their legs. They don't always grow back, but. They can live if you do that. Most of them are omnivore, omnivorous, so they um, feed on plants as well as insects. Um, then you have scorpions. These are found in most uh, temperate and tropical climates. Not around 
here. Thank the heavens. Thank the Lord about that. Anyways, they have, um, most of them are either ovoviviparous, where they lay their eggs in their body and then their eggs hatch and then they have babies, or viviparous, which means live birth. And um, so that's something interesting there. They do have a venomous stinger on their tail or their telson. Um, usually not fatal to man, but it would make it would wound a man for sure. But it can be fatal to um, to certain types of animals. And most of the time they're nocturnal. So that's scorpions. Then you have mites and ticks. Mites usually you can't even see them. Um, and um, sometimes ticks are, can transmit Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Um, Lyme disease they're both parasitic mites and ticks so we don't like them harvest mites are chiggers they suck the blood from their host by fastening onto the skin usually their victim doesn't even realize it and then until the skin reddens swells itches like crazy um, a lot of you guys have been in the woods you know this and that's basically the mite getting on your body it'll lay eggs like put some alcohol over it to get rid of them all and then use, um, and then use um, like anti-itch cream, that kind of thing. Um, but because these guys transmit um, in diseases, big bad diseases, um, obviously they are something that we do not care for at all. Um, then last but not least, I think this might have been two lessons, twenty point three, but you know, um, this helps. Centipedes and millipedes. All right, centipedes and millipedes. Centipedes and millipedes I, I need to put on here so you can have um, so you can have um, these in your notes. But centipedes and millipedes, um, it, centipede means 100 footed, millipede means 1,000 footed, but they don't really have 100 feet or 1,000 feet. It's just what they mean. That's just what their names mean. But centipede has one pair of legs per segment. So they have little segments, you know, that, and they're kind of... Um, uh, flattened or whatever there um, and so they have a little bit of a flattened body where millipedes are more rounded so anyways they have one two legs one pair of legs per segment and until the like the last um, don't look at the last or the first segments on either one of those to determine what it is and flip it over if you want to touch it and centipedes have one pair of legs per body segment that's the biggest way to be able to figure it out and then millipedes they have two legs or two pairs of legs sorry i keep saying that four legs per body segment and usually their legs are a little bit smaller kind of almost more hair like and um but the centipede is carnivorous and you'd think one with more legs would be freakier but no centipede is actually carnivorous and it will feed on animals people not really people, but I mean, you know what I mean. It, it, it can take a bite out of you. Um, they're poisonous, but millipedes are basically harmless. They have a stink gland. That's about the only thing that um, is harmful about them. It just makes you, they just stink. Um, some centipedes um, might have as few as 30 legs. Some of them may have as many as 354 legs. I don't know why it says 354, like. I guess they figured that out. But anyways, the common house centipede has about 30. And then um, then the ones, the millipedes are going to have more. But um, the centipedes usually prey on insects, spiders, slugs, earthworms, that kind of thing. Um, they have a poison gland, whereas millipedes have the stink gland. I told you that. Um, so 100-footed, 1,000-footed, carnivorous, herbivorous, um, poison gland, stink gland, it? Oh, two pairs of legs per body segment, four pair of legs per body segment. So they're worm like little creatures. They don't have eight legs. That's so they're not considered an arachnid or an insect or whatever. They have lots. So they're considered like we talked about arthropods, like up here in this um, category. Insects, those are arthropods. Arachnids, those are arthropods. Crustaceans, those are arthropods, 10 to 14 legs. And then you've got, um, which we've already talked about, and you have centipedes and millipedes, which are two different. So five different kinds of arthropods. You should have that already in your notes as well. And that finishes up 20.3.
but we're getting ready to talk about crustaceans the next time. So anyway, that's, um, I think, Tuesday and Wednesday lesson for next week. Have a good week.